Hello. I mean, hello. I'm host Eric. On the Huesto de Tarquiendo de Femio City Piplio Place, aka the host of the one and only Talking to Fan People. And there's PM. It's always nighttime when PM's around. Ain't never gonna be daytime. Ain't never gonna be morning when PM is in town. It's always evening, afternoon, or nighttime. Greetings, wisdom. What you doing? You come to watch your brother pooing? Well, I've been up all night, slaving away in the music mines. And uh, I think it's done. I'm going to share a link with everybody here. It's an unlisted link because I'm going to make a video for this. But I wanted to have a copy of the song I can listen to in the car. Here's a link. You can listen to it yourself if you'd like. It is unlisted. This is special just for people here right now. It's just for the special people. And if you click that link, this is what you're going to hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, so sexual. I was just thinking of what's referred to as the horrific thesis. What's the horrific thesis? The world ended already when I wasn't looking? Damn, I knew I should have been paying better attention. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. I want to know what the horrific thesis is. Thesis is. I want to know what the horrific thesis is. Thesis is. What's the horrific thesis? Is it? What rhymes with horrific? Is it more terrific? Meow meow? Is that being created and going to hell is worse than not existing? Um, well, I mean, only for some of your experience, right? So some of your experience is spent prior to dying. And that experience counts just as much as the experience spent after you, you're dead. The only difference being, of course, presumably... After you're dead, you uh, you accumulate much more time in total than you do uh, while you're alive. But um, it doesn't change the fact that it wasn't worse than not existing when you were enjoying existing. It might seem like it at some point that if you could go back and make a deal or something, you would choose to not take the whole package, even though you enjoyed part of it. And, and the part that you enjoyed was definitely worth enjoying. And the part that's experientially torturous to you, obviously, is going to preclude you from enjoying being existent. But... It's not like it's offered as a contractual arrangement before you're born, right? You don't exist to enter into the contract before before you're conceived. God's friend, you mean CJRND, DJRND, EJRND? He's God's friend. More terrific cheetahs kind of rhymes with your horrific thesis. 
your horrific thesis is more terrific cheetahs will hurry up and beat us at gatherings and meetups. Saw. Saw indeed. Saw indeed. Well, I've been working all night on this. I'll put the link here. Um, uh, hard to say for sure. I remember listening to my brother listening to Lincoln Park and wondering why there's something rather than nothing at six or so. Sup, Genexial. Hey, girl. You know you my world. I am the Michael Jackson of masculine men. Just to say, extremely masculine. If you have any suggestions about the thing as it currently stands, go ahead and share them with me. I've considered uh, trying to do Rachel's vocals again. Uh, the thing that, in general, I'm possibly, you know, a little concerned about maybe is the vocals, some vocals. But part of the problem was I fucked up when I recorded Rachel's vocals a bit, and then I've worked with them a bunch. I should probably just record them again. The problem being I had it on line instead of mic, and it gets a lot of noise, and you can hear the noise. But um, hi, Winston, Ma Winston, mom. You're giving me Randy Newman's vibes. Mm. Voice vibes. Well, like I said, if you have any suggestions, it's, it's I've been hammering at it, trying to get it as perfect as I can. Uh, Rachel went to sleep last night without re-recording any vocals. That kind of works the way I had. Three-way catch-up is very important. I like just a couple of Randy Newman songs. I think he's a good songwriter. Um, as far as his voice, I don't terribly care for it. I don't terribly care for my own voice either. You know, it's hard to find a voice that works well for a lot of different things. Certain voices work better with certain songs than others and so forth. Um, I could probably re-record my vocals and do a better job too, you know, for some of them anyway. Hmm. I don't know about three-way catch-up, whether it's, it's going to have a song or not. But we're going to have a song that will be a jingle, probably, like, like, don't go drowning in the regular catch-up, try three-way catch-up today, <laughs> something like that, you know? Just a, just a jingle, that's all. Just a jingle of a schmingle or pingle. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, this is the, the theory that my, uh, Dad threw out there, or not theory so much as 
possibility, I guess you'd say, for lack of a better word, is that Trump resigns with like a week left in his presidency. And Pence does one thing as president when he takes over. Pardons Trump for everything he's done heretofore. I think that's plausible, but probably unlikely to happen because it would mean Trump would have to resign the presidency. And to him, it's going to feel like defeat. Unless somebody pitches it to him as, this is the way to really stick it to him and show him you don't, you don't accept their, their election results. You don't take them as legitimate. Why would you hope so, Lee Trimmer? The guy's a criminal. He's an ESFP scumbag. I'll never learn anything from him, but I'd love to see him go to jail. You know. And he's like, he's, he's the answer to a joke before he became president, which is, what would it be like if an ESFP became president? Everyone laughed. Oh, that'll never happen. I mean, they're like practically retired. Well, it happens, Walker. God, I hate ESFPs. <laughs> Sorry, ESFPs. I guess I'm just not in the mood to, to... Just Trump really, really shit on your parade quite a bit. If you're, if you're a human being that's not an ESFP, you just, at this point, even if you like him better than me, at this point, you're just shaking your head at Trump going, oh, my God, what a clusterfuck of a disaster of failure. On every fucking level. That idiot is an idiot. You know, I mean, he's just too much of an idiot to... He, he shouldn't be running a fucking dog pound, let alone the country. Bring him more on. <laughs> it's like, if you're not using TI <laughs> as... And so if you're if it's polar, stay the fuck out of politics, please. Trump is pressuring Pence today on his responsibility. Am I sure that's my own opinion about Trump? I mean, whose opinion do you think it is? I don't... And, fjug, 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 that's just a speculative possibility my dad threw out there. I thought it was interesting. I hadn't thought about it. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying I wouldn't put it past him. It's not fake news, right? You know what I got to see yesterday in the news, which was great, which was amazing to finally see. When I was trying to find information about whether or not COVID was man-made about a week ago, it was very difficult to find the information I needed to find. But I, I did end up finding it. Surprisingly difficult. But yesterday, what popped up in my Google News feed? But an, uh Another article that says, okay, everybody, look, here's, and it's a great article. It basically says, um, people have made this into a partisan issue. As soon as Trump said it's man-made, everybody who hates Trump said, um, everybody who hates Trump said, oh, it must not be then, because whatever Trump says is wrong. Well, of course, that's just being incredibly dumb. Let's see. Where is that thing? Look at this. Just look at this. I just typed in COVID lab in Google News. 
Yesterday, idea that COVID-19 began as a lab leak, leak spreads. New York Magazine, the lab leak hypothesis. New York Post, new life pumped into theory COVID-19 as a result of China experimental lab leak. I mean, that's all within the last two days, right? That's what they call being a curve surfer. Boom, motherfuckers. Not you, beloved motherfuckers, of course. I'm talking about other motherfuckers. You, beloved motherfuckers, are immune from booming. Quite contrary. Yeah, Trump is likely an ESFP. Yep. You can remove the likely from that sentence. And possibly guns will always be very dumb today. He's not going to try. To... Biden's not that ambitious. Okay, this is a very misleading title. They're expecting what? And I'm getting a why with an occasional what else. Well, I was going to ask what what? But I thought the extra what was redundant. By the way, utter self, check out the mix. Tell me what you think. Check out the master. Tell me if it's blaster. Fancy Deluxe, you are just kidding us. Well, we were fooled. We were shocked and alarmed to hear what you had to say. And then all of a sudden you pull the rug out from underneath us and tell us you were just kidding. Well, now what are we going to do? What are the arguments for Trump not being an extrovert? Um, just want to be contrary, I guess. Hi, kids and Davy. Is your is your Kenton touching your Davy today? Don't let Kenton touch Davy. Kenton's a little bit handsy. Kenton, Kenton, get your hands off Davy. Stop touching in there. That's not appropriate. Okay, we have an area called our privacy. We need to respect that. Kenton, I want you to join the show, Davy and Goliath. Fenty Deluxe says, Eric, you once said that ESFJs would have a hard time distinguishing faux intellectualism. Why is that? Fourth slot in I, polar TI. Um, basically, and that sums it up. I mean, the thing to say, to note as well, is it's been indicated to me by Sean that there's some group of people out there that quote unquote doesn't have any internal dialogue. Well, you know, when he was saying that, he was positing that no internal dialogue actually correlates with SI polar. Whereas, because, you know, he, he was saying, like, uh, huh? He said what? That no internal dialogue stuff? No, it was Sean. I remember what it was happening. I remember the conversation. Sean was trying to use his lack of internal dialogue, according to him, or internal monologue, I guess you'd say, um, it, as into a justification for typing himself ENFJ. And I said, well, I don't think that's an ENFJ thing. I think that's much more likely to be an ESFP thing because, um, you know, TI Polar plus extra intuition eighth plus ni fourth means just a a really language free experiential frame you know what function do you think relates to getting a song stuck in your head probably probably ni i would say that yeah i'd say ni probably
So I think that it's a fee, to the extent that that's true, they don't have an internal monologue. That would explain a lot, right? I'm constantly talking through things in my head, either from the position of, well, usually from the position of like pretending like I'm explaining it to somebody, kind of. I got to poop. Cognitive stockings. Don't forget to put on your finest cognitive stockings to go to the ball tonight, okay? To go to the ball, you need stockings, a slip, an overslip, uh, an underdress, a dress, a gown, a sweater, and a cardigan, and a hat. Oh, I got to poop so bad. Oh, my God. I hate eggplant, though. Don't even get me started on the eggplant. Okay, don't even get me started on it. That's how you make me angry. If you get me started on the eggplant. Harry, listen to this song while I'm gone going poo. Brooding here won't do any good. But brooding's more and more my style. I see the cheery ways of standing where we stood. Because I've been stuck here a while. That's despite a natural selfishness that makes it easy to have fun. The flutters in the gut become a fist, and all my visions come undone. I tried to scream, just tried to dream the other new way, but other new realities are burning every day. I pour a bit, I am out of it. For reasons still unsaid, till I need to get out of me. What's inside my head? Seems like everybody's so sensitive, so ready to just get mad. Living like a kid, cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and skill? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to will and how to tip the golden cat. I tried to stream this track and dream the avenue away, but other new realities are burning every day. And for a bit, I am out of it. For reasons still unsaid. Till I need to get out of me. What's inside my head? Come 
come undone. I tried to scream this trap and dream the avenue away, but avenue realities are breaking every day, and for a bit, I am out of it. For reasons still unsaid, till I need to get out of me. What's inside my head? So ready to just get mad I seek the civil ways of living like a kid Cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to wail And how to tip the golden cat? I tried to stream this track and dream the avenue away, but avenue realities are breaking every day, and for a bit, I am out of it. For reasons still unsaid, till I need to get out of me, what's inside my head? God, I'm back. <laughs> I do like talking to Delilah, though, on the phone. We got to burn the bush. Thanks at herself. <laughs> Melodically populated. <laughs> we wouldn't want a uh, we wouldn't want anything with low density population. That's oof. you're just not taking good you just not making good use of the space. Okay. Well I could do that. I mean, I had it with my voice in there as well, but I liked, I guess I liked uh, like the way it sounded without it better. Okay, let me hear your most, your very important discovery that I must hear at once. I must hear it at once. The only people in the world who call it Queen's Gambit Netflix show are people from around here. No. Stevie Wonder is crappy, and Steely Dan is um, intermittently genius and intermittently crappy. You want to know what's a great Steely Dan song? It's a new one. Uh, Everything Must Go. You just got to skip the first minute of <laughs> random saxophone solo before the song starts. Who typed what? Christopher Chapman typed Stevie Dan is just Stevie Wonder than without NI. I mean, which which Stevie Wonder songs do you like, Razor M? You are the sunshine of my life. 
That's how I want to be. 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 Yeah, okay, don't you worry about a thing's a good song. I agree. I don't know Summer Soft. I just call. I say, I'm but then I stop and totally change my mind. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was going to say I love you, but I changed my mind. Uh, well, you know, I'm blind. I change my mind a lot. Blind people do that. TV, you've got to stop blaming everything on your blindness. Bee Gees are great. <laughs> Bee Gees have a lot of great songs. I'm sure they got a lot of crap, too, but, you know. I know someone who saw Stevie Wonder in his hotel walking through the lobby. He got Star Trek and waved like man. Stevie's bodyguard said, man, he can't see you, but he loves you. <laughs> Don't wave at Stevie Wonder. You're wasting your time. That's not true, Razor M. That's just lying about aesthetics. Eric, chill. These are sleepy hours. I am chilling, dude. I'm chilling. I'm chilling like a, like George Foreman's grilling. Oh, I did notice that once. I didn't find it interesting enough to take a chance for the show. Probably won't ever. Which show is that? Stevie Wonder's bass fishing, bass, bass fishing adventures. Yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The beholder is the name of the deity in charge of, um, in charge of determining quality in art. Leaf trimmer, the answer is yes. And even if you had phrased it how I originally thought you'd phrase it, which is, Eric, you so subscribe. Actually, I don't subscribe. I ascribe. Okay. <laughs> Eric, you so ascribe to an objective frame of aesthetics. That's true. I do ascribe to an objective frame of aesthetics. Right. Well, he's obviously not very ninja. If I were blind, I'd be able to hear things miles away. I'd be able to smell... I'd be able to smell your mood. I'd be able to smell what you're thinking. If I lost my sense of taste, I'd be able to see a mile away. I already can. <laughs> I can see way more than a mile away. <laughs> so what's in, it depends what's, whether there's obstacles between me and how, where I'm looking. Yeah, it was the same question. But I would be, I would have totally agree with it even if you said, you so, blah, blah, blah. that would have been cool too. That would have worked for me. Boy, I gotta lie down. I am tired. I stayed up all night working on that. That gosh darn musical number. That song and dance number I'm preparing for the talent show. Oh. Oh, all right. You're gonna go through the OSHA regulations like a badass on a motorcycle with a bull. I'm just buttoning my pants. Why? Because I they're unbuttoned. There. Ah. I could totally go to sleep. Leaf tremor says, I agree. Surely there is an objection to You're also laying. I'm not laying, Leaf Tremor. I'm lying. I'm lying down. Yes, I laid my body on this couch. I lay my body on this couch. And thus, I am now lying down. Once I get up, I will have lain on the couch. Abraham, every minute of every day is an OnlyFans account with host Eric. 
is just nonstop personal connectivity at the most sensual level. If you want to attain a high degree of sensuality, if you want to get your sensuality black belt, you're in the right place. Things start getting sensual right around 8, 8.15 in the morning. <laughs> After you've been up all night, you know. Lane works for picking objects, but lies don't. I mean, I tend to think that Lane works better for placing objects. But, uh, you know, you could try to do it your way if you want. Sorry if you already talked about them. Do you know about objective personality system and the cognitive type system? What do you think of them? I think they're crap, I say. Crap! <laughs> Get away from them. They'll give you diseases. Like wrongness. You don't want to catch wrongness, do you? Get away from those diseased wrong systems. Like, objective personality is just like a joke. Right? I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a, it's a it's a ridiculous joke. The fact that it calls itself objective personality makes it double ridiculous. With this Orwellian speech de double, as they say in France. No, I don't want to make an account on the same platform with Belle Dolphine. Who's Belle Dolphine? Who is Belle Dolphine? What man doesn't like the smell of his ball sweat? I, I mean, I'm not especially fond of it. I agree. I, I like it a lot better than someone else's ball sweat. A girl on the internet. Nikola Hitteristov says she's cool. What well, makes her cool? I mean, why is she known? What's she known for? For being a lady on the internet? A lot of ladies on the internet, you know. All the energy upload engine. Oh, yeah. Up. I don't know what that means. Bella Delphine at one uh, point sold her own bathwater. She's ridiculous. She's notorious for selling bathwater. Selling her bathwater to friends. Selling bathtub water. She's a bathtub water seller. Well, good for her. Currently, my bathtub water, I'm obviously not squeezing as much value out of my bath water as I could be. I'm just letting it go right down the drain. Well, you know, I recently stole back from Brocco my, my gaze that he had originally stolen from me. Well, actually, his mentor had stolen it from me, and he had stolen it from his mentor. And I stole it back. <laughs> if people would buy your bathwater, you'd be less depressed. Well, do you want me to use my powerful Brocco's gaze on you? Or that I've taken it back from him? He, he's lost his gaze. Who wants to be gazed at? Anybody? There's some people, some, some testifants. <laughs> some testifants. Um. Martyr chest defense. People satisfying. <laughs> it's not me. No. I think, you know. She has just have, may have been mentored by by Dear Abby. He was a religious reader of Dear Abby. Felt like her mentorship was indispensable to him. I am so thirsty. I need to drink something besides just coffee. 
I was socialism. Man, quit saying Norway has socialism. That's not socialism. I don't think the mentor is exactly real either. So here's the thing about C.S. Joseph. Um, yeah, well. Um, What were they saying? Oh, yeah. Brocco's gaze. So when I gaze at you right now, what you're going to feel is a sense of deep peace and probably a lot of healing from your past traumas and also any physical and emotional and mental illnesses you have. All it takes is the gaze. Look at it. How powerful is it? Is it working? Did I turn it on right? <laughs> Wait, hold on. There. Okay, now it should work. <laughs> is it working? <laughs> Is my gaze working on you? I see you. That's better. Ay, ay, ay. Up to in place 48, do you also think that cats are mammals in, in Western taxonomy, but reptiles in Eastern taxonomy? And that each is equally valid? Because, you know... You can call it whatever. Doesn't matter. Growing spinach. I'm growing spinach on my belly right now. I've got a crop of spinach growing on my belly. That's why Popeye's always got his face down here. You think there's something dirty going on, but he's just trying to get my spinach. You may buy glasses. Just don't tell anyone I taught you. I, I don't understand. <laughs> no cats are fishes, and they are called catfishes. No cats are fishes, and they are called catfishes? They're called catfish. Because, why? They have whiskers like cats. They're the, the whiskeriest of all the fish. Don't touch my fish whisker. Eric, one of your students is a hyper Christian, meaning they're hyper and Christian or they're ultra Christian. Classes, glasses is just for anything. I assumed that was a typo. Is there a dogfish too? Yes, there is a dogfish. Why it's called a dogfish, I don't know. Catfish are called catfish because they have whiskers like cats. Dogfish, I don't know. They must uh, they must pee on your carpet or something like dogs. Uh. <laughs> 
Dogfish have to be kept on the leash when they're swimming in the ocean. That's how come you know they're dogfish. Oh, Jesus. It is a tiring, tiring existence I'm living right now. Full of need for sleep. I've always been into agriculture, Diamond. My interest in agriculture goes back to early pre-humans. Back when I was just emerging from the Mesozoic period, I just evolved from a chimpanzee into a human. And I was brushing the proverbial dust off of my new body, and I was like, damn, that evolution's really fucking kicking my ass these days. Seems like just a few days ago, I was a fish. Anyhow... <laughs> Back then, I said, you know what? Since now I'm full homo sapiens, I might as well plant some shit. I'm going to start a farm. It's going to be called Eric's Farm. Like, those things are good to eat over there. What are those called? Not eggplant. I hate eggplant. No, those aren't zucchinis. That's not good. Potatoes. Okay, good. I'm going to plant a bunch of those in one spot. I'm going to put, make them grow there on purpose. I'm going to till the fields with the strength of my manly shoulders. And then, and the upturned dirt shall I tuck like, like chosen little gems. Shall I tuck a potato eye beneath the soil and let it grow there? into a bold and proud potato plant, bursting with potato flavor. Yes, that'll be the day, I said. <laughs> Back as I emerged from the Mesozoic period. <laughs> that'll be the day when I really get shit started around here. I need to start a farm. And, uh, you know, then some Neanderthals came by, and I was like, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I hear you. Hey, look over there. They all looked, and I bashed them over the head with a club. She's like, look, it's gonna, we're going to have to start the Neanderthal genocide right now. I'm not having you halfway human, halfway whatever things, monopolizing my caves. Those are my caves. I explained it to him with the I explained it to him at the end of a gun. <laughs> there. That takes care of the Neanderthals, I said. Homo erectus, you're next. I'm coming for you, motherfuckers. And that's why there aren't any Homo erectus or Neanderthals left. <laughs> they live deep under the ground? Well, that's a possibility. It's possible there may be some Homo erectuses, Neanderthals, Homo habiluses, maybe. A few, uh, like, I don't know, Anthropolithipicus mans. <laughs> they might have a, a group of them. They have a, a support group that they live underground in these very dark caves off of mushrooms and bats. That's all they eat all the time mushrooms and bats. But they're kind of mushrooms that have some green vegetable vitamins in them, and the bats are filled with vitamin C, so they're fine. Anyway, they live down in this cave, but you know, there's not that many of the pre-humans left after I, I genocided them all. So there's like you know a couple, maybe a dozen Neanderthals, maybe eight Homo habiluses. There's like six Anthropolistic Capricus man's. <laughs> Did I say Homo habilis already? <laughs> it's like six of them. Anyway, they go down there, and sometimes when they're feeling blue, they have a support group. Basically, they just complain about me. <laughs> I hate Eric. Eric, uh, habilis. <laughs> oh, habilis found me. 
Shout out to Rectus. <laughs> oh, homo Rectus. You're always ruining every party. It's like, oh, God. Homo Rectus is here. Oh, no. Who told him? Who told Homo Rectus we were having a party? I said, I said, Hablas or above? No Erectus. <laughs> you know, you're going to be inviting, you know, protozoan bacteria to my party. Some protozoan mold. Oh, hi, protozoan mold. Nice to see you. It's been a while. God, I can never understand what that guy is saying. Well, he has a protozoan mold. <laughs> oh, those are all my prehistoric friends come to visit me sometimes on Evolution Day, on International Evolution Day. I meet with my former species back when, you know, I've, gone, I've done all, I'm trans-evolutionary. I've been all of the, the links on the evolutionary chain. I've been protozoan mold. I've been small amphibious creature. I've been a cow. And then I've changed from a cow into a whale. And then back to a dolphin. And then into a beaver. <laughs> and then <laughs> naturally one moves up a complexity from beaver to, uh, you know, like a, a Mustang, a wild Mustang horse. And then I just started getting more two-leggy. I started being more like a giraffe. And it was kind of this hybrid giraffe horse thing for a while. <laughs> and finally, I found my way back to the primate track. I was a spider monkey. And I was the biggest spider monkey. And then I was some other kind of monkey. I forget what the species name is. And then I was like a chip, uh, baboon. Then I was a gorilla, then a chimpanzee. Finally, I got to Anthropolificus as this man. And then Homo erectus, which was the worst. Let me tell you, I hated being Homo erectus. Fortunately, I was only Homo erectus for about a month and a half. One of my quickest evolves. I had to adapt a lot to changing environment. <laughs> you know, epigenetics. <clears throat> well, you gotta understand also it was um it was not during one of the stages of punctuated equilibrium, it was in a state of disequilibrium, which means evolution was turned on and going super fast at that point. Everything was just like, Whoa, oh, what kind of creature am I? Oh no. Anyway, that's how it works. I was there, I saw the whole thing. I'm an eyewitness to history. When Lincoln was assassinated in Ford's Theater, I was there, sitting just about three rows in front of him, down, but it was down a level, you know. I heard the gunshot, and I was like, God, is that Lincoln getting shot again? And so I said, he's never been shot before. And I said, well, yeah. And they didn't really get what I was saying, I guess. When... When Julius Caesar was killed by Brutus, I was there, standing there saying, hey, don't, oh, shit, too late. When Cleopatra killed herself with a snake, she sent me to go get the snake. I said, fuck no, I'm not getting that snake, it's going to bite me. And she sent somebody else. I left before she did it, I didn't actually see that one. When uh, the Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated to start World War I, I was there. Standing right next to the assassin. I was thought he was pulling out like a cane or something. I was like, wait a second, is that a pew? I was like, oh, fuck. Why am I always in the wrong place at the wrong time? When the printing press was invented, I was there. When it was later lost in a fire that winter due to poor fire safety skills, I was also there. When it was re reinvented, for the third or fourth time in the next two, three, four hundred years, I was there each time. 
and I was responsible for the fire that destroyed it each time. But it was always an accident. And uh, when when people had the potato famine in Ireland, I was there. When Kenya stole the highlands from Scotland, I was there. When the Allies firebombed Dresden, I was there, riding inside of one of the bombs. Fortunately, it was a dud. That's why I survived. If I had gotten in one of the bombs that wasn't a dud, it really would have been a trouble for me at that point. Otherwise, I just had to wait out the several thousand degree inferno inside of this metal bomb. I hope, fingers crossed, it didn't get hot enough to go off. Or, you know, the heat get in and make me sweat too much or something. But I was fine. After the fires went out, I popped out of the bomb and I shot mortars and mustard gas everywhere. Surprise, I said, Germans. But they were already dead. I put on my gas mask, walked all the way from there to Italy, which is quite some distance. And uh, I had a brief engagement with an Italian girl named Marionetta. So I found out she was a wooden puppet. And uh, she had not actually yet undergone the transformation from wooden puppet to real girl, despite what she had said on her dating profile. So naturally, I was upset. And uh, she was flammable. And exactly how it was that she got on fire, I'm not sure, but that was the end of Marionetta. Um... I was the last person she's going to tell that lie to. Unlike Pinocchio, Marionetta, her nose didn't grow when she lied. If anything, she just looked more legit, you know. It wasn't until I tried to poke that I realized, shit, this bitch is made out of wood. You get you. That probably's happened to you too. I'm sure. I'm sure that's happened to everybody here, right? Are we arguing now? Are Rachel and Eric arguing? No. <laughs> Why would we be arguing? Are you and your significant other arguing? I don't know. I was going to title it, What What? But then I thought, no, why ha Why be redundant? Why have two what's? You only really need one. Well, I mean, given how... How... Totally, you know, how basically my relationship is completely free of conflict. It's an odd thing to to jump to, you know. It's like <laughs> if I was gonna say what about something, like 0.01% of the time would be about Rachel. Oh merciful heavens. I just wanna. Jazzercise till my, my. I just want to jazzercise my little tush off. That's what I want to do today. If you're if you've not done your recommended daily allowance of jazzercision, yeah, that's the correct term for jazzercising. Once you've completed jazzercising, you have engaged in jazzercision. Do we have any veterans of jazz precision around here? Anyone who's experienced with uh, the fine arts of jazz precision? J 
Jazzercise, 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 jazzercise. Everybody jazzercise with me. It goes like that, basically. Oh, where, oh, where have my little things gone? Oh, where, where have they gone? Here. Flamboyant jazz hands. So, I'd like to do some, work out some choreography with everybody while you're here for our show we're putting on later. Okay, so remember, it's clap and step and one and two. Okay, clap and step and one and two. No! Clap and step and one and two. How hard is that? God, none of you people are ever going to be professional dancers. Not a one of you. You're all terrible. I don't know how you... What even made you want to audition for this play? It's clap and step and one and two. You're getting it all wrong. You know, I have been a choreographer now for about 40 years. I have never seen such a bunch of incompetence as you fucks. When I say I want jazz hands, I want to see those things shimmer, motherfuckers. I want to see those things shimmer. You're going to die forever. You're going to learn how to die. Ah! What I am looking for in this whole group of mediocre people is just one person who has got it. Can I ever tell you about time I met Pip Midler? She has it. When Bet walks in a room, you know she's there. I'm here! You know? That's what none of you have that. None of you. None of you are Bet Midler. None of you can play the lead role in Hocus Pocus like Bette Midler can. None of you can sing Oh, Sound Me a Lady like Celine Dion. None of you are either of those people. That's why you're never going to make it in the jazz precision business. I underwent jazz decision today. Now, I'm not going to be able to go out for a while. I'm going to be stuck in bed for a bit. Yeah, a jazz decision is not something you're going to take lightly. You have to have the jazz taken out of you. It's... Well, you'll notice my hands, this is as much as they can go, as fast as they can go back and forth, and I can't do jazz hands anymore since I've had my jazz decision. Yeah. It takes six Catholic priests to do a jazz session. It takes six Catholic priests, two rock musicians, and a country artist to do a jazz session. Six Catholic priests. Um, they're mostly just there to supervise because they've got experience in a similar field. But uh, they do bring. Uh, Rock and roll water to sprinkle on the person infested with jazz. Let's make some jazz. Fucking jazz. Jazz is so dumb. Like old good jazz is good. Like like stupid jazz is so stupid. You know what else is super stupid? 
like modern classical comp composition music that's all weird and disjointed and and like this constructed bullshit instead of having anything intuitive about it at all. Um, just absolutely terrible. So, you know, he, like fancy jazz and, and fancy new classical music. P to the U is what I would say about that stuff. You can take your shooby doo wahs and your bobby doo bop ops, and you can take your and you can shove them up your ass. Love, Eric. It's not very loving, Eric. It is loving. It's it's tough love. It's love the hard way. It's it's driving the rear the rear tractor up the the back roads. Love the hard way. So if you're like me, you're often asking yourself, well, where or where has my little dog gone? And realizing she's dead. She died years ago. <sighs> what a sad realization that is. But I don't want to get another dog. A dog is almost more responsibility than a child, it seems like. Other people want to take care of your child for you. They're their grandparents anyway. You know, the grandparents want to have access to your child. Grandparents don't want to take care of your dog for you. Jazz tea? I didn't know there were jazz tea. You know, these are called jazz arms. You do that during your dance, it's jazz arms. Um, <laughs> it's jazz face. <laughs> you do this during the dance, it's called jazz face. <laughs> Very jazzy. <laughs> Why is Manali uses it on all of her shows? That's how you know something's jazzy. If Liza likes it, it's jazzy. There's a little bugger right there. <laughs> the jazz dick. They only do jazz dick at Chippendales, okay? Jazz knees. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like your head's fall over, right? Jazzy jazz. So jazzy. Well, anyway, I do like some jazz. I like good songwriting jazz, but. But stupid, like, musicianship jazz is just dumb. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like it at all. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like it at all. I don't like your musicianship jazz wherever I may go. Yeah, I don't like your musicianship jazz because it's a big dumb show. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like your musicianship jazz at all. Poker face. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like your musicianship jazz. I don't like your musicianship jazz. Poker, poker face. I call that song musicianship jazz. Lady Haga. <laughs> Is she Halam? Hala Remember yesterday we were learning about Halam and Halal? And we we both, everybody thought they were saying harem and hello. No. No, it's Halal and Haram. Touch 
changing my penis is haram unless it's circumcised touching my penis is haram unless you're my married bride touching my penis is haram not haram it's haram yes touching my penis is haram because the black dress is so white and gold and blue and dark Yes, I know what you're talking about I saw that thing I bum, bum, bum. It just goes to show you the color is just perceptually determined by nuts in your eyes Nuts in your eyes That's what these things are The black parts, they're nuts This is called your eye nuts The black part in the middle Check in the mirror, Mackenzie Hoffman, see if you have eye nuts. If you have eye nuts, that's halal. That means it's it's okay. If you don't have eye nuts, that means you're dead, and that's haram. That's not allowed in Judaism, I believe. I'm gonna. I know what I'll do. I'll make a point of constantly getting Judaism and Islam confused with each other. That that should be amusing. <laughs> yeah, because you know how Judaism has their jihads and stuff. That's Islam. Oh, well, I mean, but Islam's got the menorahs and the right. No, did I get that backwards? spell that monkey's name monkey's name monkey's name who rumbe who rumbe that monkey monkey monkey's name i don't know how you spell anything anymore mckenzie hoffman i've just lost i've lost it all i used to know how to spell things I used to know how to think I used to have purpose and meaning in my life now what is it now i'm just a Dumb whore making his way through the world. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> my, my student, <laughs> my student, my ninth grader last night. We were reading, reading this book called Codex. It's pretty kind of kind of good and kind of terrible at the same time. But uh, anyway, uh, he asked me what a man whore was. Because you know it's, it's like youth culture a little bit. This book is designed to be uh, to speak to, to youth and the modern generation, how they think and talk. You know, well, being not too controversial for schools to use in their curriculum. What is genial? Genial means pleasant, affable, agreeable, easygoing, easy to get along with, pleasant. Non-turgent, non-turgid, and prone to deliteration. I figured that months ago, in a way, that is less humane. He figured what months ago? How to be genial? Better genial than menial. That's, all, that's what I always say. I'm so exhausted. I spent all night staying up and working on that song. I was feeling pretty glad that I I toughed it out. You know, I um I did have to tough it out a little bit. Uh I'm gonna keep saying no, don't don't say ah good enough. Don't say that. Just try to Fix everything. It's fucked up, you know. Or change it, you know, make take, make new takes. But I think it came out, you know, it's like, I know that the, the recording of Rachel's vocals that I started out with it didn't come out very good because I didn't record it well. Like, I I had the input on line instead of mic, so it's got more noise than it should, and I 
Add it on minus 20 and turn it up rather than on zero and turn it down like an idiot. So it's got a lot of noise in it. And I could re-record Rachel's vocals, but I actually like the way they sound in this mix. And it contrasts kind of nicely with the unaffected or much less affected vocals in the chorus. Brooding here won't do any good, but brooding's more and more my style. I see the true ways of standing where we stood, cause I've been stuck here a while. That's despite a natural selfishness. Sit down. I'm not starving at the moment. I actually have been consuming stuff. She hadn't heard it yet. Uh, when she heard it, when she went to bed last night, it was in comparative disarray to where it is now. So I think she's going to like it. Well, let's turn around. Thanks for a small blur. Appreciate it. No, I recorded two tracks of Rachel and Larry. Them. I mean, it's true what what Leaf Trimmer implies there, which is that Rachel's not a vocalist per se. Um, but the main problem with this particular set of her vocals has to do with and it's not really a problem i think it sounds good but um is that uh 
I didn't record it well. I fucked up the recording of it a little bit, and I didn't, uh, I didn't recognize the problem immediately. I just, you know, I was being and I ignoring like an idiot. No, I'm not saying she's bad at all. I think it sounds good. I'm saying that uh, that she's not a vocalist in the sense that she's not a um, she's it's not like working with a an experienced recording musician, right? People who are experienced with doing a lot of recordings and understand it from sort of a music production perspective or a musician perspective are going to um, are going to have more awareness of what they're trying to do in front of a microphone, you know. And but I've noticed that Rachel Rachel gets some very good. Uh, very good takes. Uh, it's just, it's like, I need to, I need to do a better job of recording her in both in terms of the, the engineering part of it, but in terms of the TE of it, like, however, do a given, a given section multiple times until I hear one that I'm happy with and then go on to the next one rather than have her go through the whole thing multiple times and then try to figure out which one's good. Well, look, the thing is, it's a big mistake to think that um, more Better, better musicians make better music necessarily. That's that's not true at all. Uh, of course, the authenticity of of Rachel's kind of amateur status as a singer has to be captured just right. But um, you know, and she'll get more accustomed to the process as we go along. Her pitch is pretty good. It's pretty damn good uh, for somebody who's not a fair musician at all, you know? So uh, I have a song about marijuana, I think, somewhere. It says, marijuana, oh, hosanna. Go bring long on here to the sauna marijuana in the sauna go tell Lona if you wanna singing is difficult on a studio recording and it's one of the things that it makes it a good couple process for us because um, for both of us, we feel, I think, I, I never worry about people, if somebody, if she's here while I'm recording or something, it doesn't bother me, unless I'm doing some kind of vocals, in which case I can get a little self-conscious, because I know there's going to be a lot of shitty takes of them before I find one that I'm satisfied with. And, uh, and so that can be, that, that, that takes a certain amount of courage. But I enjoy having the opportunity to experience you know the the healthy relationship aspect of things where um where we don't we don't run afoul of each other very much Yeah. Well, you know, 
the thing is, I I may. I may try a couple of uh I, I may the thing is that that master I have right there that I've shared with you guys, that is as far as I'm concerned, a possible done master. But I may end up doing another mix and master and seeing if it comes out better or worse, uh having Rachel reuse some vocals. And again, um I'd like to use this mic. I'd like to have it engineered right and and then see, you know. Hi, email Anthrax. Are you emailing Anthrax people again? What did, mom, what did your mom say about that? She said, don't do that anymore, remember? Why are you hello me this? In my message, I specifically said F.E. Tool. Why are you hello me this? I like hello me this though. Hello me this, Leaf Trimmer. Christopher Columbus discovered America. Hello me this. Okay. You really want me to return to Discord? Um, well, you want to clear out the issues with it? I don't care. It's a waste of my time is the problem. The only, the only capacity I could conceivably incorporate it would be if I'm, if I'm live streaming, I could talk to people there, but my experience with that hasn't been, uh, reassuring. You know, I don't want to go there when I'm not live streaming because what's the purpose of having those conversations? There's no media being made out of it. It's just a waste of time, you know. I got actual things to make. It, it takes a lot of effort to make something. And even when I put in many, many, many hours making something, I'm never really sure. When I make stupid paintings, that does not mean I'm an ISFP. Um, I don't think that anybody thinks making paintings makes you an ISFP, but if you'd like me to think that, I can. Do I watch TV shows? I watch anime. I'm currently watching Dr. Stone because, um, what's his name? Poop face. Sky Gear said, Dr. Stone is better than this other one I was watching, which turned out to be not that great. With the other one, and uh, so I started watching Dark Shadow. I like it a lot. In fact, if I had thought about it before I started live streaming, I would have watched it instead of live streaming right now. Probably get it, stop live streaming shortly and watch it. It's pretty exciting. It's basically like a civilization game, but as a cartoon, it's like the game Civilization mixed with Minecraft, but as a cartoon. The premise is uh, everybody on Earth gets turned to stone and is a statue for 3,700 years. And then a few people start waking up. Um, they have to basically be in the right conditions, like in a cave where there's bats and stuff, because they need nitric acid to get on them for them to wake up. So one of the guys who first wakes, the guy who first wakes up is this super sciencey guy. Named Sinku. And uh anyway, it's pretty fun, pretty fun cartoon. I like it. I like cartoons. I like I like childish stuff, I guess. As long as it's well done childish stuff, you know. I don't like actually childish stuff. It has to be properly executed. It's like one thing that pisses me off about this this cartoon. It's only the bad guys ever kill people. So Senku's determined to defeat these invading barbarian hordes without 
killing them. It's just like, come on, just kill them already. They've tried to kill you multiple times now. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And they kill each other, the bad guys do, but the good guys never kill anybody. I don't like that in a cartoon. I want, I want a little bit of bloodshed in the cartoon, <laughs> you know, not in real life. Uh, I, I gotta go. I'm tired, and now I want to watch cartoons. Goodbye, my beloved friends. I love you all with my heart and my tender moistures. <laughs>